All right, so for today's topic, <clears throat> we're going to talk about Webmaster Tools. Um, Google provides us two services and several others that are really useful for us if we've got a website, if we've got a small business, if we've got, if we've got some online presence. Uh, the first one, if you open your web browser, and go to the address google.com slash webmasters. So let's go to the address google.com slash webmasters. So because Google is the largest search engine, it has a lot of traffic going through it. Let's say we want to get to your business online. We don't know what your business is, but we're going to search local vegan coffee shops, let's say. And we searched on Google, we get results. One of the results is your site. We click that link and we go to your site and then we go to your site and buy your product. Well, Google was the middleman at that point, uh, taking us from someone that had searched to someone that had found your site. And Google tracks all of that stuff. It tracks what were the search terms that someone used, um, what uh, position were you on search, even deeper things like when someone actually visits your site, what were the most viewed pages on your site, even what was the trail that they left. They started on the home page, they went to the about page, they went to the shop page. Google can track all of that. So lots of data is, uh, is out there and Google, as, the, as well as the other search engines, are, are tracking that. And so we want access to that data ourselves. We want to be able to see what Google sees because then we can create uh, action plans. I can see this page here is very popular. I didn't know it was popular, but Google is telling me I'm getting a lot of traffic to it. Well, how can I take advantage of that? If a lot of people are visiting a certain page on my site, how can I take advantage of that? We won't know these things. We won't know even to ask these questions if we don't know the data. So Google has two portals that we're going to look at today. One is this one, Google Webmasters. Uh, they also call it now the Search Console. For a long time it was called Google Webmaster Tools. I still call it that all the time. But sometime last year they changed it to Google Search Console. So I'm going to mix them up both a lot, but the official term nowadays is Search Console. And here we get a little um, blurb. You want to be found on the web. We want to help. Track your site's search performance with Google Search Console and browse around for more webmaster resources. So basically this is the manual, this is the this is straight from the horse's mouth about the do's and the don'ts for your website. Because the concept of getting found by Google or Bing, Yahoo, etc. Uh, easily is called SEO, search engine optimization. And some of you are in my other classes, so you're getting some of this more than once. But SEO is the art and the science and the magic of getting your website found when someone searches. We're optimizing for the search engines. And one of the most important things of SEO is having these tools set up so that we can understand our data, so we can understand what's working, what's not working. Here under Webmasters, we, we can get tech support, learn how it all works, and connect get support for your site. If something's wrong with your site, get, the fa get help fast using our top issues list, support documentation and testing tools, learn to make great websites, stay connected and updated, and all of that. So, and these are free yes. Later when we look at Google Analytics, there is a free and a paid version, and we'll be using the free version. So, we're going to use this one. There's an intro video you could watch at some point. The internet is amazing. 
It's so easy to share anything you create with the entire world. Like Alice, she just opened an online store for her custom jewelry. But now she is wondering, can people find her site and mobile app on Google? With Search Console, Alice can make sure that Google finds her store and shows it for the correct search queries. Search Console also displays the errors that Google found when reading her site and app. Alice can check those errors and fix them so all video on your own. But this is something, as I said, I teach this stuff, but I also do this for clients. This is something that I set up for clients like right away because this is going to track data. It's going to track traffic to your website, but not until you set it up. So if you've had a website for a year, but you just set this up this day, it's not going to be able to go back in time and tell you what your traffic was a year ago. So as soon as you set this up, it'll start keeping track of it all and therefore the, lo the more length of time that you have the more data you have the more accurate data you have I liken it uh, like to the stock market if you look at one day on the stock market it may not be so good if you look at it in one week it might not be so good one month might not be so good but what's the stock market doing in one year in five years in ten years and so forth so the same thing with your data the longer you, you have this set up, the better, the more data you can get out of it. So if you didn't bring your login passwords and such, that's okay. You'll still be able to at least create the account and have it ready for when you're able to apply this to your website. And this will work on a Dreamweaver website, a WordPress website, Wix, a WordPress.com website, just about any website. The first thing that we'll need to do then, on the top right corner, we'll click the sign in button. We've already got a Google account. It's the same one we used previously for, uh, for YouTube and Google Plus. Or, of course, you can create a brand new one. But we'll use the same one from previous days if you'd like. Just click sign in. And because I've already got an account, mine will look a little bit different. But just go ahead and sign in, and then I'll check what yours looks like, and then we'll go on. Take a moment to sign in. Again, mine's going to look different, but yours is probably going to look very basic, or it's going to ask for an intro or something. Um, and it's just way if you see like a little video of that little web page, that would be cool. Take a moment. Do you want me to click on search console? All right, everyone. So what we have here is the Search Console, previously known as Webmaster Tools. Mine is different because, as I said, I do this for a living also, and I have access right here to all of these clients' data. So mine's already set up with a bunch of websites. You are going to set yours up right now. What we want to do is track the data that Google Search Console sees. One thing to make a note of that we will get to in a moment, but make a note of this. When we set this up, we want to set this up so that Google keeps track of the www version of the site and the non-www version of the site. Because technically, those are two different websites to Google. Technically, they're two different domains. So when we set this up in a moment, we're going to need to set up one version of it and then the other version, the www version and the non-www version. Thinking a little bit further, eventually we're also going to have the secure version 
in the non-secure version. So if you've got a website with HTTPS in the address bar, that's the secure version. And if you've got a version without HTTPS, that's the insecure version. We'd have to track those as well. Question there? Question in the back, guys? Question? So um, here then, you see a little box that says add your website plus a video. I don't see it exactly, but you're going to see a box that says add your website. And it's going to ask for, the, for your website. And this is kind of cool. If you've got an app, an Android app, you can actually track its data as well. But you probably don't have an Android app. You just have a website. So first what we would start off with is HTTP colon slash slash my website whatever the name of your website is, I'm going to start off with the non-www version without security. And most of you don't have security anyway. You're not going to be able to do the HTTPS version. That one requires that you purchase an SSL certificate. That is something that you're going to pay for on a yearly basis between $80 and uh, $90 a year, something like that. Depending on the company, you can get them at Bluehost, GoDaddy, HostGator. You can get them at a bunch of those kinds of companies. For us, most likely we have the insecure version, and that's okay, and we're going to do your non-WW version first. So type in your web address and then click continue. Yes? Now the SSL, I've heard about that. Is that mainly for like e-commerce sites so people feel comfortable spending money with you? Pretty much, because you're going to be transacting valuable information. So you want it to be secure and you want that SSL. If you've got a basic website where you're not doing that, it might not be so necessary. So again, mine might look different than yours. If it looks very different, raise, raise your hand because I need to, to see that it's different. But um, after you add your website, it should go to then, okay, you need to verify your website because I could claim that any uh, any website that exists is my website. I can claim that, but I have to prove it. Because what's to stop my competitor from setting up Google Search Console to see my traffic? This is what's to stop them. There's a few ways here to confirm that you are the legitimate owner of that website. Now, sometimes it changes depending on people's setups. I don't know why, but mine says Recommended method to verify, HTML5. Some of you might say recommended method, GoDaddy, or something. It might detect you've got a GoDaddy website. Um, this, is how, this is where you're, you need to decide how to set this up. And I'll, whenever I talk about this, I usually pause for a moment to help people individually because it varies so much. I can't show the technique for everyone. But here's the basic idea. We need to choose one of these methods. There's like five methods. You need to choose one of these methods to verify your site. For mine here, it's recommending HTML file. What this is saying is, I'm going to download this file. This has got my unique Google um, account file. I'm going to download it, and I'm going to use whatever method I have to upload that file to my server over to mysite.com slash whatever. Then I'm going to return to Google Search Console and click Verify. That's one possible way. You might have alternate methods. If you can't do this or if this is, doesn't make sense, you might have alternate methods. Under alternate methods, this might vary for you as well, but mine says HTML tag. Here's another way to do it. I can select this one line of code and add it to my website in, in the way the example tells me, in the meta tags, in, in the metadata of the site. Yes. Is it browser? Well, is it, could the browser be the problem? I was able to log into my host, but through the Internet Explorer browser, I'm unable to verify. Could I switch to Chrome or something? I, it, it wouldn't hurt, so yeah, try switching it, and if it still doesn't, I'll be helping people individually one moment. So the HTML tag might be another way that you can verify. Those are usually the two ways that I would recommend. Either file upload or HTML tag. Even though it mentions also domain name provider, I would not bother with that one. 
If it detects you've got GoDaddy or Bluehost or whatever, I wouldn't bother with it. I never do it. I think it's hard also. So I wouldn't even recommend you, you try that one. Other ways to do it are Google Analytics. Well, if you've never set up Google Analytics, don't bother with that one either. If you do have Google Analytics set up and you know it's set up properly, then perhaps you can use this method to vouch for your search console. console. If you've got Google Tag Manager, same thing. If you know you've got Google Tag Manager set up properly, you might be able to use it to vouch for Search Console. If you're not sure, then don't do it that way. What we're going to do then is take a couple of minutes, if you're able to, try to do either the HTML upload or the HTML tag. And if you need help, raise your hand. I'll help you first come, first serve. We want to see if we can get this done for as many people as possible, and then we'll go on. What is, so this is not Google Analytics. No. What is this doing? Google Search Console. This is the big thing about it that Google Analytics is the big famous one that usually I spend most of my time on. This one is also valuable because this one will tell you the health of your server. It will tell you if you've got broken links. Google Analytics won't. This will tell you if your server is ha has a virus or something. Google Analytics won't. So when we fully set it up, I'll go through all the details. But we do want to set them both up. And it is confusing and annoying that it's two different websites to get all that information. And the www versus the non? It is two different things for Google in Google's eyes, and um, we so would do, we do need to do both. And then when we set them both up, we'll tell Google this is the preferred one. Do you want to use www or not www? Let's take a moment to see if we can set this up. Yes. Thank you. 
But I was just trying to log it in. If you're logging in, then when you do the search console here, you're going to download that file. If you're going to do that, you're going to do that. 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 Yeah, my website is going to do that. Yeah, my website is going to do that.
Well, now that I'm seeing exactly what I'm deciding to do, some kind of a public stance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you did get one to work, the non-WW version like I just showed, try to do the WW version also. There should be a button that says add property, and now take a moment to try to do the WWW version of it. You want to do both because Google does see it as two different websites. Technically they are, they're technically subdomains. Google sees that. If, if you have experience with Bing, you don't have to do that with Bing. Um, they, they don't care the difference, but Google does. 
So take a moment. If you got if you got the non www version to work, then um, you want to go back to Search Console and add property for the other one, just like I've got here. And all you really need to do for the for the www version, just plug its name and click verify. Your first one is already verified. This one will verify with the same data, but you have to just take the extra step of verifying both. So see if you can do both of those. We'll move on in just one moment. If you have any last questions, call me over and we're about to move on. Yes. Last questions. I think we're ready to move on. What was the last thing? someone else yes okay everyone so I'm gonna move on hopefully you've got your set up if not that's okay I'll help you during the next break but the concept of this is that we're setting up the search console so we can track the data that is going to our site so taking a quick look here I've got this account set up and it's set up for various clients and I can see all of their data so wherever you're at just to be on the same page you want to remember that this is an active link. So click on Search Console here, just to take you back to your main overview, because we can look at the data at each individual site. But just go back to Search Console to take a quick look there to figure out what we're looking at. Search Console here will allow you to, to look at the sites you've got set up, but not with any real relevant info on this screen. This is just to select one of the sites. On the right side, you've got Add Property, and if you want to add more websites, you can. And next to the website that you've added, you've got Manage Property. They call it a property because technically this can also track data of an Android app. So it doesn't say Manage Website anymore. It says Manage Property because you can manage your website or your app. 
But anyway, under Manage Property, you got Delete Property. Let's say you no longer want this data. That doesn't mean Google is going to stop collecting the data, unfortunately. That means you just no longer want access to the data. Um, the big thing about this is that um, the U.S. lags behind in this very big topic that sometimes people don't want Google or any search engine to track any of their data online. And, it's, and the U.S. is lagging because at the moment in Europe, for a couple of years now, they've had a law which was the, the right to be forgotten law. So in the European Union, they fought Google and they won. And in, in the European Union, if you request to Google, remove my stuff from Google, they will. They have to. It's the law. In the U.S., it hasn't happened. Um, so deleting your property here doesn't mean delete all the data you, you know about me, Google. It just means I don't want to see the data. We've also got then add or remove users. This is how more than one person can look at this data. Right now, I set this up with my account because I logged in with my Google credentials. But if I go to add or remove users, I can give other people in my company access to this. Instead of them logging in with my email and password, I don't want that. I want them to log in with their email and password, so I, I just need to set up more users. I would need to do that for every product I want to share. So that's very useful. I've got access to this as well as the business owner, as well as other people on my team. So those are two items in Manage Properties. In this list, we can, we can look at it by property, health, or alphabetically. One of the big reasons to have Search Console set up is for this, to check the health of the property. Severe health issues are found on your property. So I need to look in. What's the problem with that? Well, that's a test site. I know what's wrong with it. But if you get any of these yellow or red markers, it's going to tell you there's some sort of problem with your site. This is one of the reasons we want this. Analytics will not tell you this. Google Analytics will not tell you this. Search Console will. You can also view things in detailed or compact view if you've got a lot of websites to, to work with. On the left side, this is, this is our home screen, which is the same as clicking on search. Then we've got messages and other resources. Some of you probably have a message or two right now. Go ahead and click on all messages. And this is Google sending you automated or targeted messages that are telling you things either to help you with your search setup or to make you aware of other things. So when I set up these, when I set up the swccis.com site and then I set up the www.swccis site, it gives me two emails that says improve the search presence of this site. This is going to give you a cool little checklist. So you probably have one of these if you have it, click on it. If you don't, you'll probably get one soon. You get one of these kinds of emails when you set up both the WW and non-WW versions. And what that little message is, it's going to say, don't forget to add all versions of your website, non-W and WW, as well as secure and not secure. So that'll remind you of that. Number two, then, is to select your preferred version, which is the one that you want to appear when someone searches. Do you want it to be www.victor.com, or do you want it to be simply victor.com? So that's a little process there, not difficult at all. You can do it on your own. Which country are you targeting? If this is in English and you're targeting an American audience, why not set it to focus on the US? If it's English and you're tra targeting an Australian audience, why not target it to Australia? Give other people access. That's the same button as the other screen. Manage users. Submit a site map. We'll talk about that soon. And learn how all of this thing works, the manual. Just some steps to go through to fully set this up to learn more. Yes? What's your recommendation on whether or not to send them to the www site or just the regular? The funny thing is I go back and forth all the time. Like one month I remember to set it up as non-WW, the preferred. And then like I come back to it a few months later and I'm like, which one did I do? I'll just use I'll just choose one. So I don't think there's there's a good and a bad. It's whichever one you want to use, but I'm trying to remember to do the non-W version more often because it's less to type. It's it's more compact and this is this really is feeling much more old school. We all know these are websites. We don't need to say WW anymore. It's not the nineties anymore. Mm -hmm. We this is a website, so it's just the name of the website. That's it.
So uh, I, there's no wrong or right answer, but I'm trying to remember to, as often as possible, set it to the non-W one. That was under all messages. If you look under other resources, it's more things to learn and read about. For example, some really advanced stuff, but what I'm going to point you towards, for example, is uh, Page Speed Insights. Let's take a look at this. Go to Other Resources. Go to Page Speed Insights. This will find out how to make your website fast on all devices. Because you might not have thought of it too much, or at all, but the speed of your website is one of the many factors that the search engine takes into account for your rankings. You might have followed every other rule, and you've got a very slow website. I'm not saying that you're going to go from position 1 to position 30 on the search results, but I'm saying the more of these things you address, the more likely you'll be number 1 on search, or number 2, whatever, instead of number 100. And one of them is, how fast is your site? Let's see if we can get some insight here. I'll do page speed insights. Okay, enter the name of your website. Uh, non W or yes W, I don't believe it matters. I'll go with non W version. It's going to take a moment to analyze it. This will give me data about how fast does it appear on a mobile device and on a desktop from, from 0 to 100. So it's showing me how fast is my site on mobile and how fast is it on the desktop. Apparently, I've got two, two exclamation points on both. Okay, well, what's wrong? Eliminate render blocking JavaScript and CSS in above the full content. Some of this is going to be very technical, but it is going to say examples of how to fix it and such, and other links to for for resources. So we've got some should fixes. Consider fixing and three OKs. Yes. Some of these like automated like remove render blocking JavaScript as a link. Is that going to affect the, the site at all, or is it going to remove that block? Well, th that's a very good question because reading this literally, it makes me think, okay, remove these lines of code. No, that will break your site. What this is saying is remove it from the above the fold content, which means you've probably got this code at the top of your code, and it's recommending to put it at the bottom of your code. Above the fold is what do you see first when you first load the site? This is above the fold. What do you first see? It's above the fold. It comes from the concept of newspapers. Because newspapers, remember those things, were uh, big like this? Big, tall, newspaper size documents. They stack, they fold them, and they stack them. There's a stack of them. Everything on the front page is important because it's the front page. But when you fold it, you cannot see what's below the fold until you pick it up to look there. So in the old days, above the fold me meant when the newspaper is folded, the most important thing has to be on this top fold. Obviously, this bottom fold is still important, but you won't see it until you pick up the paper. On websites, that still counts, because above the fold is what do you see first when the site loads up. And this is saying this code is too high up on on your design, it's recommending it to put it down at the bottom of the code. That is a little technical bit of thing to do, but it's recommending that number one. Move that code down to the bottom of your code. Not all of us or any of us might be able to do that or understand what that is, but here it's at least telling you, learn how to do this, tell your web person to do it, but this is a thing that's perhaps slowing down your site. Yes. The specific word is that you need a responsive theme. That means that the theme will respond to the size of the screen. This theme that I've got here responds. It shows it as a nice vertical simple website with the menu collapsed into this little icon. If I check the same website on the desktop, it responds to that size 
And notice there, it's going to show three pictures instead of one. It's the same theme, but it's designed in a way that it responds, and so for, therefore it gets small when you're on the right size screen. So responsive. Enable compression. Again, some of these are very technical. Show how to fix. Well, this is saying most likely these resources here need to be compressed. These are valuable files that make up our design of our site, the mobile style, for, except, for example. But this is usually something that you have to set up on your server to activate compression, because this could be 66% smaller. It's already only 8 kilobytes, but it could be compressed even smaller. Every little bit helps. Browser caching. Well, red is usually not good, so I'm going to say it's not so good. But then I got here yellow, which is a little better. It's still not as good. And then eventually it'll be green. I don't remember what number it is. It might even be 70. I don't remember which one gets you to the good numbers. But red is, is, is the not good number. And uh, yellow is better. And then I think green comes next. Does any, did anyone get green? If you try it. Uh, you got green over here also? Yeah, but it's a very simple slide. Okay. But I got that Java blocking. Oh, okay. What uh, number did you end up getting anyway? 87. 87. Okay. I don't know if it goes like actual classic grades. You know, 80% is a B, 90% is an A, 60% is a D. I don't remember if it goes that way, but at least I'm seeing here suggestions what should fix and what could fix. Yes? Uh, I think you mentioned it probably last week. If I want to see what people search for, we're going to see that in Google Analytics, yes. And other things, optimizing images, some of these images like this one. I could compress it a little bit more, supposedly, even though I would think 5K is tiny, but it still says you can compress it 9% more. So you go to Photoshop to yeah. install? You can do it in Photoshop if you've got... You can also install software on your server that will also compress it. Uh, so that's kind of advanced, but the easiest way, the way to answer this is, yeah, in Photoshop, compress your graphics, the ones that it's telling you, compress them a little bit more, and that'll save your speed as well. Is there a free tool for that? Yeah, you can also go over to uh, pixlr.com, P-I-X-L-R.com. It's like the online Photoshop for free. You can go to pixlr.com. They've got three different versions, Editor, Express, and Pixlr Omatic. And I guess now a desktop version is downloaded. But if you go to Pixlr Express, I believe, that one will quickly let you compress your pictures, either resizing them or compressing them so that they take up less space. I've been using Pixlr for years, probably like seven years. And they were bought uh, recently by, I believe, Autodesk, which is obviously the big name in CAD and such. Yeah, they used to have a really sort of like Spartan website, and now after they got some money, their website looks nicer. But basically what it is, is either you've got Pixlr Editor, which is like Photoshop in a web browser. Sweet. Is it free? And then you've got Pixlr Express, which is quickly filter my picture or resize my picture or compress my picture. And then we've got pixlr o -matic, which is sort of like um, Instagram in that you can you can put these filters and look like a hipster photographer. And then you've got down at the bottom, you've got uh, Pixlr Desktop. That's new to me. I haven't heard of this one. It looks like now they've got a desktop version. I don't know if that's free. Uh, Mac or PC. So anyway, Pixlr, P-I-X-L-R dot com. I recommend them. I haven't used them very recently, but I've used them for a long time and recommend them. You even got an, uh, an app. So that's a, a free service for you to compress some of these graphics. Because again, the slower website that you have, the more it could hurt your SEO rankings, the rankings on the search engines because that's related to user experience. A bad, slow website, why would the search engines want to rank that? They want a good, fast website. Sir, are we going to have to download the 
down, uh, like copy the file out of our website, reduce it down, and then re-upload it? Most, most likely, that's the way you'll need to do it. But if you have the ability to change settings on your server, and that's much more advanced, then you change the settings on your server, and the server will compress them, and you won't have to do those steps. By that, you mean like GoDaddy? Yes. yes. Um, you'll have to look to see if your account has the capability on GoDaddy to activate some of these advanced features. If it does, then you activate this compression on the server, on the GoDaddy server, and it will compress it for you without you having to do those extra steps on Pixlr or whatever. That's very advanced. Yes? And if they don't have the setting for that or whatever, so it would mainly be like if you're going to upload or add new content to your website, you need to compress your graphics first? This is what it, yes, but this, what this screen is telling me is my site as it currently exists has these issues. So I would have to go back to my currently existing graphics and fix those. But for future graphics, yes, definitely keep that in mind and keep them as compact as possible. Now at least I got a silver lining here, user experience, 100%. This is also an important thing to take advantage or to look at, which is that how, um, how user-friendly, how, how fun is your site to use, or how hassle-free user experience. The buzzword is UX. UX, user experience, which is that is our site a good user experience? Does it have good user experience, such as tap targets appropriately? What that means is you don't realize how fat your fingers are until you try to click on something on a mobile device, mm -hmm. and then your finger misses and clicks on a different link. Well, this is saying your tap targets, your links are big enough for my big old finger to tap. Um, yeah, all of these things the search engines look at, and all of these things the search engines take into account to rank your site. So if you've got really tiny text that is hard to read, and you tap and you miss, that's going to hurt your user experience, and then that's going to hurt your rankings eventually. Legible fonts, configure your viewport, avoid plugins, some plugins really slow down a site, and so forth. That's right, because on the desktop we're going to use a mouse. But for the tap target, it's going to be a finger. Oh, there isn't? Let's see. Desktop. Mine doesn't have it. Mine doesn't have it. That's a good point. Um, not sure. But on desktop, I, I fared a little better. It went from 56 to 69, and so the things were... The thing about um, some of these might be different on the desktop also is because the desktop computer is often way more powerful than a mobile device. A mobile device is really going to care about the compression of your graphics, for example, because I might not have you know, 4G connection. I might have... 3G, or I might be in an area with bad reception, so those graphics are taking a long time to download. So lots of factors to think about, but on your point about you only wear on the desktop, that's rapidly changing. More and more people are using mobile. That's why it's going to show you mobile first. It's very subtle, but it's going to show you mobile first because more traffic is going to the mobile devices nowadays. And that is something we need to think about. So if your site is not mobile friendly, if you've down there like on 5%, 10%, that's a big thing you need to change. You need to have a responsive website nowadays, a website that responds to the size of your device. So that was some of those resources here from uh, Search Console. The, the annoying thing is actually this should have opened in a separate window because I want to go back to my Search Console. I'm going to have to press back several times. So wherever you are here, you want to go back. You should have that open in its own window. But page speed insights is a valuable thing to, to look at. What else? If you're selling stuff online, we've got the Merchant Center, Google My Business, which is basically related to Google+. So when we talked about Google+, that's basically this. 
email markup tester if you're sending emails uh, like email campaigns. Are they properly optimized? More things to think about there for you to check. And we've got structured data and structured markup helper. These are very useful but not for every website. Basically what these do, the data testing tool, um, basically this is going to depend on your particular site. So it might make more sense here. If you look at Structured Data Markup Helper, what this is going to do is, well, what's the main content of your website? Do you have articles? Are you about a restaurant? Are you about products or TV episodes? This is kind of data that Google can understand and show it easier on the search results. Have you ever done search you've searched and some of the results look different than the rest like maybe you've actually got star ratings next to a product whereas something else doesn't so this is that and it's more set up but if you do book reviews on your site you say I have book reviews on my site you go through this process and when someone searches your results will look better than the rest because you've structured your document to show nicer on Google it doesn't apply to everything, obviously. I'm a web design business, and I don't have anything here to highlight what I do. Maybe, you know, if I'm a local business, <coughs> I'm in a restaurant, etc. So that's pretty advanced, but that's something to look at. These other things we'll look at that are a little more tangible, but there's other resources. Yes. Just one moment. Yes. For the... Um the categories that they have, like if, let's say if I chose uh, products, is that uh, that would be for all of my products or just that certain page that I'm putting in the URL? Um, yeah, that's the that's why this is complex. That's for the certain page. So you do it for each page, basically. Okay. Yeah. Question? Well, that's what I was saying, that Google My Business is related to Google+. Plus. So once you set up a Google Plus account, you can get on a map. And, and you know, when you search and you appear on a map, that's related to that. So if you set up Google+, Plus, basically it's, it's that. So you did that, though, right? Mm -hmm. Should you see your pages? Like, that's what makes it present. Yeah, and then when you log in, it'll show you all your pages. So it is there. It's just that from this screen here, it doesn't know that you've got it set up. When you go here and actually log in, then it'll show your pages. So that's for someone that has never set this up. But yes, we did this. We're going to take a break, and then when we come back, we will look at, okay, we've got it set up. What, what, what good is it? We'll look at that in a moment. But you might want to explore these resources here. You might want to set up your properties if you haven't done so yet. General <coughs> questions before the break? Yes. In that feature there, I have two addresses that I use. And it seems like there's no possibility that I've ever seen where you can become multiple locations. Uh, on Google My Business? On anything that I've done, they, they want you to, like Google AdWords, Google everything. I haven't ever been able to have them bona fide two addresses. And they still use addresses that I've moved out of. And so I just don't understand why the data works. I put it in, I look at it, I see where it's supposed to be, but somehow the search engine doesn't work there. Mm -hmm. That might be a little more complex than I can have an answer for, but we can look up the, you know, the help, the, the help contact in here somewhere and try to get a hold of them, and it has worked. I have called Google for help, and then they do fix my problem, so it might be better to talk, you know, directly. Directly with the horse's mouth. Yes. I I usually start all of these clients' uh, accounts myself from my account because I can just do it the fastest, and then I can go in manage property and add the owner of the business. So I'll set it up for them, I'll add the owner, and then the owner can log in. And then if 
we need to part ways. Mm -hmm. I unadd myself from it, and then the owner still has access to their data. Okay, but basically, when they go in, they go in with your. No, with their own credentials. Okay. If I add a new user, it's adding them with their own Gmail and password and okay, such. Okay, so if you were to go in there, that would be requested, those fields. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, it's 10.36. Let's take a 10-minute break. We'll be back at 10.46. And we'll see, well, what did we set up here? What's, what's the point of this?